The Gell-Mann and Lowe theorem is a theorem in quantum field theory that allows one to relate the ground or vacuum state of an interacting system to the ground state of the corresponding non-interacting theory. It was proved in 1951 by Murray Gell-Mann and Francis E. Lowe. The theorem is useful because, among other things, by relating the ground state of the interacting theory to its non-interacting ground state, it allows one to express Green's functions which are defined as expectation values of Heisenberg picture fields in the interacting vacuum as expectation values of interaction picture fields in the non-interacting vacuum. While typically applied to the ground state, the Gell-Mann and Lowe theorem applies to any eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Its proof relies on the concept of starting with a non-interacting Hamiltonian and adiabatically switching on the interactions. Topic: History The theorem was proved first by Gell-Mann and Lowe in 1951, making use of the Dyson series. In 1969 Klaus Hepp provided an alternative derivation for the case where the original Hamiltonian describes free particles and the interaction is norm-bounded. In 1989 Nensu and Rash proved it using the adiabatic theorem. A proof that does not rely on the Dyson expansion was given in 2007 by Molinari. <laughs> Statement of the theorem Let Psi zero display style psi underscore zero wrangle be an eigenstate of H zero display style H underscore zero with energy E zero Display style e underscore zero, and let the interacting Hamiltonian be H equals H zero plus G V. Display style H equals H underscore zero plus G V where G Display style G is a coupling constant and V Display style V the interaction term. We define a Hamiltonian H E equals H zero plus E minus E T G V Display style H underscore Epsilon equals H underscore zero plus E carrot Epsilon T G V which effectively interpolates between H Display style H and H zero Display style H underscore zero in the limit E zero plus Display style Epsilon right arrow zero carrot plus and T infinity Display style T right arrow inf T 
let u e i display style u underscore epsilon i denote the evolution operator in the interaction picture. The Gell-Mann and Low theorem asserts that if the limit is e0 plus display style epsilon right arrow 0 caret plus of psi e plus or minus equals u e i zero plus or minus infinity psi zero psi zero u e i zero plus or minus infinity psi zero Display style psi underscore epsilon carrot PM wrangle equals frac U underscore epsilon I zero PM in T psi underscore zero wrangle langle psi underscore zero U underscore epsilon I zero PM in T psi underscore zero wrangle exists then Psi E plus or minus Display style, psi underscore, epsilon, carrot, PM, wrangle are eigenstates of H Display style H. Note that when applied to, say, the ground state, the theorem does not guarantee that the evolved state will be a ground state. In other words, level crossing is not excluded. Proof <laughs> 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 As in the original paper, the theorem is typically proved making use of Dyson's expansion of the evolution operator. Its validity however extends beyond the scope of perturbation theory as has been demonstrated by Molinari. We follow Molinari's method here. Focus on H E display style H underscore Epsilon and let G equals E E theta display style G equals E carrot Epsilon theta from Schrödinger's equation for the time evolution operator I T one U E T one T two equals H E T one U E T one T Two Display style I H B A R partial underscore T underscore one U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals H underscore Epsilon T underscore one U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two and the boundary condition U E T two T two equals one Display style U underscore Epsilon T underscore two T underscore two equals one We can formally write 
U E T one T two equals one plus one I T two T one D T H zero plus E E theta minus T V U E T T two Display style U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals one plus frac one I H B A R int underscore T underscore two carrot T underscore one D T H underscore zero plus E carrot Epsilon theta T V U underscore Epsilon T T underscore two Focus for the moment on the case zero T one T two Display style zero GEQ T underscore one GEQ T underscore two Through a change of variables Tau equals T plus theta display style tau equals T plus theta we can write u e t 1 T 2 equals 1 plus 1 i theta plus t 2 theta plus t 1 d tau h 0 plus e e tau v u e tau minus theta t 2 Display style U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals one plus frac one I H B A R int underscore theta plus T underscore two carrot theta plus T underscore one D Tau H underscore zero plus E carrot Epsilon Tau V U underscore Epsilon Tau theta T underscore two. We therefore have that theta U E T one T two equals E G G U E T one T two equals T one U E T one T two plus T two U E T one 
T two Display style partial underscore theta U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals Epsilon G partial underscore G U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals partial underscore T underscore one U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore Two plus partial underscore T underscore two U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two. This result can be combined with the Schrödinger equation and its adjoint minus I T one U E T two T one equals U E T two T one H E T one Display style I H B A R partial underscore T underscore one U underscore Epsilon T underscore two T underscore one equals U underscore Epsilon T underscore two T underscore one H underscore Epsilon T underscore one to obtain I E G G U E T one T two equals H E T one U E T one T Two minus U E T one T two H E T two Display style I H B A R Epsilon G partial underscore G U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two equals H underscore Epsilon T underscore one U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two U underscore Epsilon T underscore one T underscore two H H underscore epsilon T underscore two The corresponding equation between H E I U E I Display style H underscore epsilon I U underscore epsilon I is the same it can be obtained by pre multiplying both sides with E I H zero T one Display style E carrot I H underscore zero T underscore one H B A R post multiplying with E I H zero T two Display style E carrot I H underscore zero T underscore two H B A R and making use of U E I T one T two equals E 
I H zero T one U E T one T two E minus I H zero T two Display style U underscore Epsilon I, T underscore one, T underscore two equals E carrot, I H underscore zero, T underscore one, H B A R, U underscore Epsilon, T underscore one, T underscore two E carrot, I H underscore zero, T underscore two, H B A R the other case we are interested in, namely T two T one zero Display style T underscore two GEQ T underscore one GEQ zero can be treated in an analogous fashion and yields an additional minus sign in front of the commutator we are not concerned here with the case where t 1 2 display style t underscore 1 2 have mixed signs in summary we obtain h e t equals zero minus E zero plus or minus I E G G U E I zero plus or minus Infinity Psi zero equals zero. Display style left H underscore Epsilon T equals zero E underscore zero PMI HBAR Epsilon G partial underscore G right U underscore Epsilon I zero PM inf T psi underscore zero wrangle equals zero. We proceed for the negative times case. Abbreviating the various operators for clarity I E G G U Psi zero equals H E minus E zero U Psi zero Display style I H B A R Epsilon G partial underscore G left U Psi underscore zero Wrangle right equals H underscore Epsilon E underscore zero U Psi underscore zero Wrangle Now using the definition of Psi E display style, psi underscore, epsilon. We differentiate and eliminate derivatives G U Psi zero display style, partial underscore, G U Psi underscore, zero, wrangle. Using the above expression, finding I E G G psi equals one 
psi zero U psi zero H E minus E zero U psi zero minus U psi zero psi zero U psi zero two psi zero H E minus E zero U psi zero equals H Minus E zero, Psi minus, Psi Psi zero, H E minus E zero, Psi equals H E minus E, Psi E. Display style begin aligned I H B A R Epsilon G partial underscore G Psi underscore Epsilon Wrangle and equals Frac one Langle Psi underscore zero U Psi underscore zero Wrangle H underscore Epsilon E underscore zero U Psi underscore zero Wrangle Frac U Psi underscore zero wrangle langle psi underscore zero U psi underscore zero wrangle carrot two langle psi underscore zero H underscore epsilon E underscore zero U psi underscore zero wrangle and equals H underscore epsilon E underscore zero psi underscore Epsilon wrangle psi underscore epsilon wrangle langle psi underscore zero h underscore epsilon e underscore zero psi underscore epsilon wrangle and equals left h underscore epsilon e right psi underscore epsilon wrangle end aligned where E equals E zero plus psi zero H E minus H zero psi E display style E equals E underscore zero plus Langle Psi underscore zero H underscore Epsilon H underscore zero Psi underscore Epsilon Wrangle. We can now let E zero plus Display style Epsilon right arrow zero carrot plus as by assumption that G G Psi E display style G partial underscore G Psi underscore Epsilon Wrangle in left hand side is finite. We then clearly see that Psi E display style psi underscore epsilon wrangle is an eigenstate of H display style H, and the proof is complete. <laughs>